this, uh, feel free to. If you want to raise your hands and worship, that would be even better. Praise the Lord. Let's worship. Let's uh, pray. Father, we just thank you so much for this opportunity to be in your house with your people. And we, uh, most of all, just want to say we welcome you here today. We want to ask you to permeate this atmosphere and just uh, come and have your will, have your way. Let, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on this earth, in this time, in this place, as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen.
Sometimes on this journey I get lost in my mistakes Looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength My story isn't over, my story's just begun Failure won't define me cause that's what my father does Failure won't define me cause that's what my father does Check your shame at the door Cause it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the Father's house I was not the end game The journey's where you are you never wanted perfect You just wanted my heart The story isn't good Failure's never final When the Father's in the room Failure's never final When the Father's in the room Ooh, lay your burdens down Ooh, here in the Father's house Check your shame at the door Sit in
And let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good. Good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh, you are good, you're good, oh. Let the king of my heart be the wind. Inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my song. Cause you are good, you're good. King of my heart, be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. Let the King of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, he is my song. You are good. You're, You're good. good. Circumstance, you are good, good. Oh, no matter how I feel, you are good, you're good. Oh, you are good, you're good. Oh, and you're never. 
never gonna let you never gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down and you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down oh, you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down again you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down oh you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let never gonna let me down let him know that you know this you're never gonna let you never gonna let me down cuz you are good good oh tell him you're good you are good you're good oh you are good you're good oh you are good He's ever brought you out of anything that you felt was bad, tell him you were good. You are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. You're good. Oh, if he's taken your life and turned it around, giving you salvation, tell him you are good. Hallelujah. You are good. Good. Oh, you are good, good, oh. If your destination is heaven, tell him, you are good, good, oh. You are good, you're good, oh. You are good. If he's given you hope, if he's given you strength at any time in your life, tell him you are good. Good. If he reigns over your life, tell him you are good. If he's bigger than all of your problems, go ahead and tell him he's good. You are good. You're good. Oh, you are good. Your circumstance may let you down. Where you are, you the people are around you may let you down. But God has never let you down. You may feel like he has because of your circumstance. But if he's ever brought you through one before, you know he always knows the best. Even though it hurts. It hurts so bad. He's there. He's never let you down. He's never let you down. As long as you've kept your eyes on him and your faith in him, he always brings you out on the other side, closer to him. So let him know that you know this. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, no, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. time one more time you're good you are good you're good oh you are good 
him right now because he is always holding on. Just praise him. Give Hallelujah. him a shout. Give him a clap. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. For so long, I didn't know who I was. And I know that that's true for everyone, that we spend so much time trying to find out who we are. And how amazing is it when we find who we are was in God all along. And he unfolds it and opens it up in front of us, right before our eyes, to show you from that point on for the rest of your life that who you are is incredible and found in Jesus. That the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in for oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. He has ransomed me, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Yeah. Who the Son says free. Yes. 
I just want to say that's a pretty amazing thing to be able to say I'm a child of God and I'm I'm welcome and I'm uh, I'm a part of God's family and I'm welcome in God's house knowing our, our pasts what the things that we've done to offend God to offend others and uh, I can say like Paul says in the, in the Bible he says I'm the chief of all sinners I'm the worst of them all and but still we are welcome and we are loved and just not only welcome but we are not only are we welcome to come in it's like hey you're welcome come on in he went out to get us he went out to find us right I mean he didn't just leave us where we were he, he went out and found us and said hey come in here this is uh, <laughs> this is where the table spread this is where you can eat of all of God's goodness and just enjoy God's presence God's uh, blessings God's favor and uh, none of us deserve it, but he offers it to all of us. Amen. So this song here, you guys have heard this several times. It's uh, one of my favorites it's called Sweetly Broken. How 
Can we sing that chorus again? <laughs> because um, I think a lot of times we have the wrong perception of what kind of father he is, especially if maybe your relationship with your father wasn't so fabulous. We kind of think of him as um, just authoritarian, just wants to just put you in your place and, and not so gently bring you to your knees, but he does. <laughs> he just gently draws you in. He doesn't force anything. And like David said, let me get myself together here. <laughs> like David said, he goes out to look for us. He's running after us. <laughs> just like the scripture says, he left the 99 to go find the one. You're the one, and you're the one, and I'm the one, and you're the one. That's what I was trying to say a little bit less eloquently earlier. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he doesn't reluctantly invite us in. He pursues us. He, he draws us in, he compels us to come in. So I, I, as we sing these words, if you have that moment in your life where you came to Christ and you received salvation, think about that moment. As you, I, f I feel like we get so lost in like, am I singing the right words? Am I singing the right note? Is, <laughs> does it sound good? Can they hear me? <laughs> Let's just really look at these words and take yourself back to that moment. And if you haven't had that moment, it's waiting for you. <laughs> He's waiting for you. And we invite you, if you haven't had that moment, now's the time. Now's the time. You can do it in your seat. You can come up to the altar. But all you have to do is just ask him to come into your life. Yeah, I think the thing is, he's, he's already invited us. All we have yeah. to do is invite him into our hearts. Right. He, the invitation's there for us, but is the, invitation, is, is the invitation there for him to come into our hearts? That's the question. Yeah. There's no question about whether he loves us. So Terry wants to do this song, this uh, chorus one more time, so let's... Uh, Let's just do this a little, let's do it heartfelt, and uh, we're going to slow the tempo down just a little bit, and uh, let's just think about these words. At the cross you beckon me, draw me gently to my knees, and I am lost for words, so lost in love. Sweetly broken, holy surrender at the cross. You beckon me, you draw me gently to my knees, and I am lost for words. So lost in love, I'm sweetly broken, holy surrender. Father, I pray that you have felt our worship and our praise of you, God, and that we stand in awe of you and what you've done, what you're going to do, and what you're doing right now, Father. God, I ask that you would just pour your blessing and anointing upon every person in this room, upon Pastor Robin as she comes to bring your word, that our hearts and minds, ears, eyes be open to you and what you have for us today. 
In Jesus' name, amen. technical difficulties. Hello, can you hear me now? Okay, so um, this morning David and Tara Parsons are bringing their little baby daughter um, Willow, Ivy, Abigail, Parsons, Sweet Pea, to be dedicated to the Lord, and I would like to invite uh, Tara's parents, Randy and Sylvia, to come on up as well. <laughs> How old is she now? She'll be eight weeks on Tuesday. Eight weeks. She holds her head up. Once she'll smile, and of course she cries and does those things too. She's got the best hair of everybody. <laughs> the best hair. <laughs> Jesus said. Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. You can just push this out of the way. Portable furniture, I love it. Um, you know, sometimes, and especially in Bible times, and not so many years ago, I guess I'm not holding this up. Uh, in Bible times and not so many years ago, a lot of times people thought that children should be seen and not heard. And one day mothers brought their children to Jesus. The disciples thought that, oh, he doesn't have time to waste on children. And when Jesus saw what was happening, he was indignant. He was not happy with the disciples. And he says, do not stop them. Let them come on up to me. Because of such is the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus also went so far as to say that these little ones have angels that behold the face of the Father all the time. Isn't that amazing? We will get to one day. But right now, little Tara has an angel. I mean, little... <laughs> well... Little Tara is an angel. Um, little Willow has an angel up in heaven that can see God's face right now. And um, then I'd like to remind you of the story of Hannah and Samuel. Now, you probably know this story, but we're going to talk about it anyway. This was back in the Old Testament while they had prophets and did not have kings yet. And... There was a man named Elkanah who was a very devout follower of God. And times were different back then. A lot of times men were killed because they did a lot of fighting. They didn't have armies and police and all that. So they just went out and killed each other when they were upset. Not a very good plan. And um, so there weren't as many men as there were women. And so God allowed them to have more than one wife. And Elkanah had two wives. One of them was called Penina, and she had several children. The other one was Hannah, and she did not have any kids, and she was very sad. Now, once a year, they would go, they would make a trip to the temple or the tabernacle in Shiloh, where they would worship the Lord and bring special offerings. And Elkanah would give each of his wives a gift to present, and he would give each of his children a gift to present. Well, he loved Hannah, and he knew she felt bad that she didn't have any kids, so he would give her twice 
a double portion of gift, but still she was sad. Now, men, take note of this. As don't try this at home. Elkanah says to his wife, why are you so unhappy and why won't you eat? Aren't I better than ten sons to you? Women, now this is the time you go, boo. <laughs> you know, a husband can be really nice, but there's nothing quite like a baby. So anyway, as they went to the, uh, temp the tabernacle that year, she was praying. And she was so distraught and earnest that her mouth was moving, but no sound was coming out. The old priest Eli said, what are you doing? He thought she was drunk. He says, stop drinking. You shouldn't be like this in here. And she, she says, oh, no, sir. I have not been drinking. <laughs> I am just so deeply disturbed. And I came to ask my request of God. And Eli, the high priest, said, ah, the Lord grant you your request. So she believed. She went home. She was happy. She ate. Hello, little one. <laughs> and um, sure enough, this time, she got pregnant. Well, when she was there in the, um, in the tabernacle, she told God, if you will give me a son, I will give him back to you to serve you all of his days. And so next year when it was time to go up to the tabernacle, she said, Hannah said, no, not this year. I'm going to wait until he is old enough to stay because I promised God that I would give this son back to serve him all of his life. And Elkanah says, very well. And so we're not sure how old Samuel was. He was weaned and potty trained, you know, I don't know. Was he three? Was he five? Scholars have different opinions, but he was still very young. And like she promised, Han Hannah took him back to the tabernacle and presented him to the Lord and presented him to Eli, the high priest, and said, he is to live with you now and serve the Lord all of his life. Now, David, I know you can be li rather literal. So just to let you know, Right? Don't, don't go to church and just leave Willow there. You're going to get in big trouble. Well, now that might work. <laughs> but I, I think there's three other people that would, yeah, would probably, physic, physically probably. do me harm and take her back. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So um, today, oh, I won't put that down just yet. Today they're bringing Willow to dedicate her to the Lord that she would serve the Lord with her life. Now, we understand that she will come of an age that she has to decide for herself. But you are dedicating her as much as you are able. You are saying, thank you, God, for giving us this wonderful, precious gift and help us to be the parents you want us to be, to, to show her how to live for you, to... Um, be an example to teach her about Jesus, to raise her regularly in the house of God. You're also dedicating yourselves because this is a lot of work. This is an everyday commitment, not a Sunday morning commitment, not when you feel like it commitment. And you will make mistakes, and she's already agreeing. You will make mistakes. Be quick to ask for forgiveness of your spouse, of your daughter. Just say, I'm sorry, I was, I was too grumpy today. Will you forgive me? And kids have a wonderful ability to forgive and love. David and Tara, this is a question to you. Do you bring Willow before the Lord today to dedicate her to God? Will you see Willow as God's child first and as your child second? Do you dedicate yourselves to live the life God has called you to and to raise Willow as God commands and desires? Yes. Randy and Sylvia, you are the grandparents. Woohoo! You are not the parents. 
God has given that responsibility to David and Tara, and they will answer to him. But you are very important as a foundation. You will either set an example of godly respect and godly living that builds up this family, or you will unwittingly tear down this little family. You will all need to communicate together so that grandparents and parents can be on the same team. Randy and Sylvia, do you dedicate yourselves to pray for Willow and for her parents? Yes. Do you commit to be an encouragement to all of them? Yes. And do you commit to live a godly example for this little child that she can follow? Yes. And now we are going to anoint Willow. This is this is olive oil. It is not magical, but it represents the Holy Spirit. Willow, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I anoint you this day. Heavenly Father, we come together. Yes, just reach out. We come together to present this little one to you, knowing that she is a gift from you and that you have a plan for her. And we ask that you would, your Holy Spirit would be upon her and with her and guide her and teach her. We ask that you would be with these parents, that you would give them wisdom and strength and courage and humility and consistency as they walk this path. And we pray for these grandparents that they may be a blessing and an encouragement and prayer warriors along the way. God, thank you that you have a wonderful, wonderful plan for this little one and her family. In Jesus' name we pray, and God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I was kind of hoping I'd get to hold that little thing, but it just didn't work out. One day, I was working with my dad down in the basement of the church here. And um, I didn't even re notice that there was a radio on. And then my dad goes, what's wrong, Dad? Oh, that song gives me a pain I can't quite locate. <laughs> what? This, what? And I started singing it. You picked a fine time to leave me, Lucille. Four hungry kids and the crops in the field. You picked a fine time to leave me, Lucille. You know that one? <laughs> yeah, I figured you would. <laughs> and I started laughing, and he goes, there's no good time to leave. <laughs> oh, so I was half chuckling, and I said, well, you're right. But maybe there are some times that are worse than others. If you think about it, if there's four hungry kids, they're probably pretty young. Right? They need attention. They need someone to feed them. Um, and if the crop is in the field and it's ready to harvest, how is he going to go out and harvest the crop if he has to stay in and take care of the kids? So... Not only has she left and abandoned all them, but she has destroyed their finances. So it's, it's going to horribly affect all of them. And he goes, well, I guess so. <laughs> now, I thought I'd at least get a laugh out of that one, you guys. <laughs> okay. I do see some smiles. Um, I've been thinking a lot about coming and going in the last couple of weeks. Um, about the miraculous way that, that God called David and Tara here to us. And um, they have been such a wonderful blessing. God gave them. And now 
it appears that God is taking away. Um, I have another, another verse for you, Job 121. Job said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. No matter, ha no matter what happens in life, blessed be the name of the Lord. God is still faithful. God is still with us. He still has a, a plan. He has not given up on you and he has not abandoned you. Now, David, once again, you're literal. <laughs> so I didn't, I got to give that disclaimer before I give the first part of the verse. <laughs> Job said, naked I came into this world and naked I'm going to leave. <laughs> the Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Just want you to know that's not for today. <laughs> Job was talking about when he was born and when he one day departs this earth. Oh, my goodness. I don't like goodbyes. But let's think of Hannah. Let's think of Hannah. She spent many, many, many years praying and longing and hoping for a child. And the day came that she made a promise to the Lord to give him back. You know, God sometimes brings hard times into our life because he has something special in store and he needs us to get ready to be submissive. Sometimes it takes an awful lot for us to be willing to submit to God's will. Sometimes we just get so stuck on this idea that we know better. <laughs> That's not true, folks. Um, and the story shows us about rewards of obedience and devotion and sacrifice. You know, after Hannah had given up her son, Samuel, to the Lord, she came and visited him every year, and she brought him a new little robe. And um, <laughs> I assume they brought him little shoes. I don't know. And then the Lord gave her three more sons and two daughters. So she ended up with six children all together. And I can guarantee her mother's heart loved every single one of them. Now, in giving Samuel back to God to actually live with the old high priest Eli, um, Eli had to be about his work, so... He just took little Samuel with him. And Samuel learned from a young age how to serve the Lord, how to serve in the temple. Samuel had his own little ephod, which is kind of like a linen um, apron that goes over the clothing and had special items on it representative of the priesthood. He is the only one I know of in the Bible who as a child had a priestly ephod to wear when he served in the temple. And I'm sure Eli told him how special that was. And I'm sure his parents and Eli told him how he was a miracle and how God had a special plan for his life. And then it's interesting because Eli did a great job of raising Samuel. But Eli did not do a good job of raising and overseeing his own sons. Phineas and Hophni, Hophni, something like that. I didn't write that one down. Um, and they were priests as well. They would sit at the gate, and as people would come to give their um, sacrifices to the Lord, they would steal from the Lord. And they went so far as to have relations with the women who came. And this came to Eli's ears. And he said, my sons, this is wrong. You need to stop doing this. But he didn't follow through. Parents, you have to follow through or your words mean nothing. There has to be a consequence that is enough uncomfortable 
that the child doesn't want to do it again. Now, I know some, some kids, it's just sitting them in the corner and making them be quiet. Oh, that, that was torture for me. Uh, some kids, it, it <laughs> you're nodding your head, you understand. Some kids, um, I know parents have just given a little swat. My dad said that's to get the attention. It's not to hurt them, it's just to get the attention. Um, sometimes parents take away privileges. Uh, parents help their child earn privileges. So they start learning the concept that you're not just given everything in this world. You are part of the family that works and helps the whole family. And your actions make a difference in how your life is going to turn out and what's going to happen after this life. So Eli told them to stop, but he didn't follow through. So one day, Samuel was still a boy, and although he was serving the Lord, he was saying the right things, he was doing the right things, he was not, he did not know God yet. If you're looking this up online, it's 1 Samuel, and we are the second or third chapter now. Um, Got to regroup. So Samuel was going to sleep one night, and he heard Samuel. So being obedient and being kind, he got up and he goes to Eli, and he goes, here I am, Eli, what do you want? He goes, I didn't call you. Go back and lie down. So he's starting to go to sleep, and he hears Samuel. He gets up, and he goes to Eli. Eli, I heard you call, and I'm here. Eli goes, go back to bed, Samuel. So he goes back to bed. A third time, he hears Samuel. So he gets up, and he goes, Eli, I know I heard you calling me. Ah, now it sinks into Eli what's happening. He goes, Samuel, go back to bed. And if that voice talks to you again and calls you, you say, I'm here, Lord. Your servant hears you. In other words, your servant is listening. So Samuel goes back to bed, and the fourth time he hears, Samuel, Samuel. And he says, I'm here, Lord. Your servant is listening. And the Lord gives him a vision of the Lord standing there talking to him, and he tells him things that he's already told Eli, and Eli didn't pay enough attention. And he tells him, Eli's sons have disgraced and dishonored the Lord. They have disgraced and dishonored Israel. They um, have sinned against me, against my house, against my people. And Eli did not stop it. Because of this, both his sons will be killed on the same day. And his, his line will be wiped out at a young age. And Eli as well is going to be removed from his place. Well, Samuel was deeply grieved by the message. When he got up in the morning, Eli says, what did the Lord tell you? And he could see Samuel didn't really want to say, and he goes, don't be afraid, Samuel. Go ahead and tell me. So Samuel tells him all of the message. And Eli says, let it be as the Lord has said. He knows God is right. Now, there's a big lesson here, too. Don't worship your child over God. And, I mean, we can see in our head, well, of course. And yet, sometimes we do. Sometimes we do in the decisions we make. Sometimes we do by not correcting their sins the way we need to. And I'm not talking about beating kids. But we need to train. We need to train our kids so that as they are old enough, they will understand and they will live the way they should. So, 
Samuel continued to grow and was blessed and respected and revered and loved by not only Eli and his parents, but by the nation of Israel, they could tell that God's hand and God's calling was upon him. So um, Samuel got older, and the day came that there was a war. I believe it was with the Philistines, but I didn't, uh, I don't remember for sure. And the Ark of the Covenant, this very special artifact that God told him how to make, was taken to war with them because they thought if they had the Ark of God's Covenant with them that they would win. See, they were thinking of it more like a good luck charm instead of a reminder of God. And in the battle, the ark was taken. Then both of Eli's sons were killed. And people came back from the war. Eli could tell things had gone wrong, and he said, what has happened? And they told him, both of your sons have been killed in the battle. And Eli was terribly grieved. And then he said, and the ark, God's ark, because he is high priest, was supposed to care for it. And they said, it has been taken. And at that, the old man was so grieved, he fell over dead. So the Lord's words came true in one day. His house was wiped out. Now, Phineas and Hophni had some family, and they were not killed that day. Um, but I'm not sure if they were ever allowed to be priests again. Our choices make a lot of difference, and sometimes choices that we don't realize are important are giving our kids messages about life, about God and his value, about the child's value. So I, I charge you and I encourage you and other parents and grandparents to be in the word, be in God's word daily and pray and talk to him. Take him your concerns. Thank him. Lift up your children and your grandchildren and your spouse and the rest of your family, lift them up and ask the Lord to work in their lives. Because God has a plan that is much more wonderful than we are. And like I said, through Hannah's great sacrifice, not only was she blessed with more children, she was blessed with a son who became a godly man, the leader of the nation. And when it, I mean, God spoke to him <laughs> frequently, and he gave the messages to other people. And when it was finally time that God allowed Israel to have a king, God really didn't like the idea, but they insisted, Samuel was the one who anointed the first and the second kings, uh, Saul and David. Samuel was a very, very, godly man, and it wouldn't have happened any other way. Well, without the heartaches, it wouldn't have happened. Without the surrender, it wouldn't have happened. Without the, the commitment and the sacrifice, it wouldn't have happened. But because of Hannah, this man stands today as a godly man, a godly man that we can learn very much from. I have rewritten Ecclesiastes, the first part of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There is a time for everything, a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to wear a mask and a time to remove it, a time to isolate and a time to gather together, a time to hug and a time to refrain from hugging, a time to laugh and a time to cry. A time to get dedicate and a time to be dedicated. A time to live out that dedication. 
a time to leave home, and a time to return. A time for miracles and a time for faith. We have been blessed to have Tara and David as worship leaders for two years. And now that baby Willow is here and David is gone most of the time for work, Tara is feeling the need to move back close to her family in Georgia. And although I feel like they're my family too, I have to give them precedence. Although we will miss them terribly, we rejoice with them over this new phase in their lives. God has provided an opportunity for them to buy David's grandparents' house that his grandfather built. And it has, did I get that right? And it has an acre of property. Today is their last Sunday with us, and we want to show them our appreciation. David and Tara, you have blessed me. You have blessed me very much. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I hope and pray that one day we will come and visit you. So, Trev, let's put that on our bucket list. Put it maybe half a dozen times on there. Um, and I want all of us to remind ourselves that God is the source of good gifts. And he has the right to take them away. But even if he takes the gifts away, he will still bless us. In the story of Job, God took all of his finances, all of his children, and only left him a cranky, complaining, critical wife. <laughs> but Job hung on to the Lord, and in the end, God blessed him twice as much. Did not give him another wife that I know of. Whew. But he gave him 10 more sons and daughters. At first he had 10 there in heaven. So he gave him 10 more, and that makes double. And his daughters, it says, were more beautiful than any other women in the whole land. And he doubled all of his herds and his servants and his wealth. And he lifted up Job as a godly man. Job is the one who said, the Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, as we close, even though our hearts might be in pain, we're also rejoicing for this new little life. We're rejoicing for the joy and the love that is in store for you in your future. And I'm rejoicing for you as the grandparents to get to be a part of this little life as she grows up. And we need to remember to thank the Lord. Thank him. Even when we're hurting, there's something to thank him for. And the more we thank him, and the more we remember what he has done, he starts to heal. And healing takes time. But the more we thank him, and we praise him, and we worship him, and we hang on to him, the more we give him the opportunity to heal us. Because he didn't mean for us to live a life in sackcloth and ashes. He didn't mean for us to live a life of being victims. He meant us to live a life of being victorious. And he will help us do that if we will hang on to him and thank him and praise him and talk to him and read his word and bask in his love. Take time every day to just sit there and imagine you and Jesus. Maybe you're kneeling at his feet. Maybe you're sitting there and he's talking to you. Maybe you're walking along the way. Take time to imagine you and Jesus. Take time to feel his love upon you. And some days it's hard. Don't worry. Hang in there. Keep doing it. Another day you will feel his presence strongly and you will feel his love. 
God is not done with you. God is not done with any of you, and he's not done with me. God has an amazing plan still with blessings. We don't know what they are. Let us remember that goodbye is not forever. If we are following Jesus, we're going to see each other in heaven, and we're gonna, we won't have to wear masks, and we can hug each other as much as we want. We can jump and sing and praise the Lord, and we, can, we won't get tired. Woohoo! We're going to have a wonderful reunion in heaven. Remember that. This is not goodbye. This is until we see you later. Amen. Amen. That's right. Until we see you later. So as we pray today, there's there's a couple things we're going to focus on. One is a blessing over David and Tara and and over all of us to ask God to help us be thankful. And another is... If you don't know what I'm talking about, if you don't know about this relationship part with Jesus, we're going to pray about that too, and you have the opportunity to give your life to him. This is how it goes. God said, this is the plan of how I want you to live. All of us have disobeyed. That's called sin. And God said right from the beginning, if you sin, you will die. But... I am making a way. I, I have made a plan. That was right back in Genesis. It already starts to talk about God already had a plan because he already knew we were going to mess it up. You know why he allowed that? I think it's because he wanted us to understand his love, that none of us deserve his love or deserve heaven or deserve a relationship with him. He loves us because he is so awesome. And it's a gift. What we need to do is accept the gift of his forgiveness and his presence in our lives and allow him to work in our lives, to to grow things in us that we can't do, like love and kindness and joy and peace. He wants to help us mature to be more like him as a wonderful, loving, caring, creative being. A holy and godly being. So let's let's pray right now. And if you want that, you pray with me. Dear God, I know, I know that I've disobeyed you, and I, uh, that's sin. I know from your word that I deserve to die, but you have sent Jesus to die in my place. Oh, Lord God, thank you. And Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins and for me. And I ask you now to forgive me, to come into my heart and my life, and make me the person you want me to be. Teach me and guide me. Show me the plan you have for your life, for my life. Thank you, God. From this day forward, We have a relationship that is new and blessed. And now, God, we also ask that you would be with David and Tara and this whole family, Willow, Randy, Sylvia. Give them a safe trip. And, Lord, provide for their needs in every way. Bless them in every way. And provide for VHC, Valley Hope Church, for the needs here. And bless us in every way, too. God, you are awesome. You are marvelous. You deserve our praise. You are the author of love. You are love. You are the author of light and life and everything that is good. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray and God's people said, Amen. Amen.
Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. And oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. And I couldn't earn it. I don't deserve it Give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Still your love fall for me You've been so, so good to me When I felt no worth When well, you paid it all for me You've been so, so kind to me And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found and leaves the 99 But I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, you're coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, you're coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, you're coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, you're coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, you're coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, you're coming after me. No, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me. Down fights till I'm found and leaves the 99. Well, I couldn't earn it and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away.
of God Oh, it chases me down Fights till I'm found And leaves the 99 well, I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God oh. uh, So, I just want to say before we go, this is our, this is our last service here, so it's our last opportunity to say goodbye in a public setting, but um, just want to say it's been a great honor to be here and to be a part of this congregation and to, um, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. It's just been a great honor to get to know each and every one of you, and uh, thank you for the opportunity of allowing us to come and be a part of your congregation and to uh, use our gifts to bless you and you guys have blessed us with your your gifts and your presence and uh, just thank you so much it's, it's truly been a interesting journey it's Amen. been it's been a wonderful interesting journey thank you for allowing us to be a part and uh, <laughs> yeah you can clap <laughs> uh, so uh, we love we love every one of you and you guys we consider you guys family because we are family. Amen? Amen. And uh, sometimes uh, spirit, the spiritual bond is really more, um, what's the word? Closer. Closer and stronger than the, the physical in a lot of cases. But uh, we're all one in Jesus. We're all one in God. And hopefully everybody here, I'm praying that everybody here knows Jesus and has a relationship with him. And our job as Christians is to, to share the love of God with everybody we come in contact with so that hopefully and prayerfully they'll come to know Jesus and we'll all spend eternity together in heaven one day. Amen. So we love you guys and thank you so much for the opportunity. Let's, let's close with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity of... Uh, being here, being a part of this uh, particular congregation, and uh, we know that you've got good things in front of us uh, for Tara and I and for Willow, and we know that you got have great things in store for Valley Hope, and we just look forward to see what you're going to do in the future. We love you, and we thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>